Some of the exhibits on display at the Smithsonian Museum of American History in 2011 include inaugural dresses worn by former and present First Ladies. Mamie Eisenhower wore a pink pull the swamp gown designed by Nettie Rosenstein. In 1961, Jacqueline Kennedy wore an off-white sleeveless gown of silk chiffon over a pull d'oeuvre designed by Ethel Frankow of Bergdorf Custom Salon. Lady Bird Johnson wore a yellow satin gown sable trimmed coat designed by John Moore at the 1965 inaugural ball. In 1969, Pat Nixon wore a Miss Mosa silk satin gown designed by Karen Stark. Although not worn to an inaugural ball, Betty Ford is represented by this pale green sequin chiffon gown embroidered in a chrysanthemum pattern designed by Frankie Welch. Rosalind Carter wore a gold embroidered sleeveless coat over a gold trimmed blue chiffon gown to the 1977 inaugural ball. It is designed by Mary Matisse. The exhibit also features purses, shoes, and jewelry worn by the first ladies at the inaugural balls. Nancy Reagan wore a white beaded one shouldered sheath gown of lace over silk satin to the 1981 inaugural ball. James Delanos designed the gown. Barbara Bush wore a royal blue gown with a velvet bodice and a symmetrically draped silk satin skirt in 1989. It is designed by Arnold Sassy. Hillary Clinton wore a violet beaded lace sheath gown with iridescent blue velvet silk mousselines overskirt in 1993. Laura Bush donned a ruby red gown of crystal embroidered chantilly lace over silk georgette in 2001. In 2009, Michelle Obama wore a one-shouldered white silk chiffon gown embellished with organza flowers and Swarovski crystal centers. The museum is also highlighting artifacts from the year 1939, a turbulent year in American history that also produced some of the greatest moments in both entertainment and sports. An early phonograph, television set, and radio were the outlets of entertainment that kept people from despairing over the Great Depression and the possible outbreak of another world war in 1939. The music of Benny Goodman, Artie Shaw, Kate Smith, Billy Holiday, Judy Garland, and Glenn Miller were topping the charts in 1939. Radio was the main medium of entertainment in 1939, and radio programs such as those featuring Edgar Bergen and his companion Charlie McCarthy were extremely popular. Life magazine and their memorable covers gave everyone a glimpse of life in America in the late 1930s. In 1939, the World's Fair in New York displayed new technological innovations such as General Motors Superhighway, RCA's first commercial television, Westinghouse robot, color photography, and other inventions. Heavyweight boxing champion Joe Lewis's boxing gloves are on display within the exhibit. An autographed baseball from Lou Gehrig, the Yankees baseball great, is also on display. He was diagnosed with a deadly disease which bears his namesake in 1939. Of course, 1939 is also remembered as the year the Wizard of Oz hit the screen, and Judy Garland's famous red slippers remain one of the museum's most popular exhibits. Before there were the Muppets, there was Salmon Friends, Jim Henson's five-minute puppet show that was broadcast on WRC-TV in Washington, D.C. from 1955 to 1961. One of the displays is an Olympic torch used in the 1984 Olympic Games in Los Angeles. An animation cell used for It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, can be seen at the museum. Michael Jackson's trademark black felt fedora is one of the museum's more popular exhibits. Farrah Fawcett's orange swimsuit worn in her famous 1970s poster can be viewed by adoring fans today in the museum's hall. The museum also features a skateboard from Tony Hawk, and a guitar from Eddie Van Halen. Julie Newmar's famous cat suit that she wore as Catwoman on TV's Batman in the 1960s is on display at the Smithsonian Museum. One of the museum's most famous exhibits is the very same Star Spangled Banner which inspired Francis Scott Key to write the national anthem. It can still be seen today, although photography is discouraged. Finally, a 1975 version of the personal home computer demonstrates just how far we have come in technology over the past 35 years or so. 